Hello everyone and welcome to the pub community call number 28. So thankful for you all to be here tonight. It is July the 20th, 2022. Quite hot where I am and from what I understand, quite hot everywhere. I've been seeing a lot of memes about how uh, people are jealous of American air conditioning today. But I am one of your hosts, Mr. Mojo. I am part of the pub report and I'm here with a bunch of my friends. We have Super Fizz from the East Acre community up. Hello, welcome. Hello, I am Super Fizz from the East Daker community. I talk about decentralization. Hooray. We also have Well, who is from a whole bunch of communities. I guess predominantly what he comes up here to talk about is HodlerCon, so that's how I will refer to him. Hello, HodlerCon man. How are you? Hello, Mojo from Well. We also have Janex up here. She leads Ultrasound Merch and is part of Plapathon as well. A bit froggy in the voice today, but will contribute as best as she can. Hello. Hello, I am just a figment of your imagination. And, <clears throat> pardon me, and also from the East Acre community, and a bunch of other communities as well, and Vetico, welcome up. Here to talk about a event that he's going to be holding later on next week, I believe. Yep, hello, thank you. Appreciate being on here. And then I guess also we have I Decentralized from the POAP growth team. Hello, welcome up on stage. If he's willing to speak. Oh, I didn't even hear him. I think he tried to say hello, but I didn't quite catch it. And his audio is not working for me. But all right, everybody. So we have quite an important topic that we are going to discuss today. So or actually, before I even get into that, see, that's how excited I am to talk about this. We use what is called the DGEN bot in order to give out the PO app at this event. Make sure to be here uh, in the stage. You want to be listening to us. You do not want to deafen. You want to make sure that you're here with us and have a good time. At the end of the event, we will give you extra instructions on what you need to do in order to claim your PO app if you do not know already. But all right, now, before, uh, you know, I jumped the gun earlier, but now we can really get into the juiciness of today. So... Poap Inc. has been in a little bit of controversy, I guess you could say, as of late. And there was a post on the discourse talking about discussion on Poap Ethics. I'm going to go ahead and link that. If you want Do you really to just like it. walk out and brand it as controversy? It is controversial a little bit. Because, what? yeah, I know. Because people have. Are we a trying lot to get of... clicks? We're trying no, to get clicks, aren't we're we? We're not trying to get clicks. It's just there's a lot of opinions on this. And I think right. that we're going to be able to have a healthy conversation about something that has people feeling extremely emotional right now. And so let's talk about some POAP ethics. So as I said before, I decentralized who is up here. He had created a post on the POAP discourse. He was asking the community to give their thoughts and ideas on the ethics within the POAP ecosystem. So whether that be... The ethics that we need to be having as community members or ethics that Pup Inc. needs to be having with people within the community as well. So I want to keep a little bit of my opinions to myself. So uh, just for now, because I do have a lot to say, but uh, Wo and I, we were having a great discussion about this yesterday. And Wo, I'm actually going to let you open it up. So um, let's maybe start with one of the questions that are here in this uh in this post so the first question on here or even actually before we even get to that well do you have anything to say before we even jump in because we did have a great conversation about this yesterday is there anything you want to preface before we even start answering questions so i'm i'm a pope issuer you know i've probably done about 30 or so collapse um myself so you know i have i have some thoughts on you know, who owns my POAPs and, and what, you know, what the purpose of them are and, and what, you know, what could or should be done with them. Um, you know, to me, I think, you know, POAPs that I have, that I've created, have a lot of sentimental value to me. But, you know, there's also kind of some additional thought around POAPs, like they could also have monetary value. So, you know, there's a little bit of conflict there between you have this memory, right? That you attended some event or you participated in something and you have that commemorated with a POAP, but then there's this potential that 
you know, that, that memory could be valuable to someone else. And that person, you know, may want to give, you know, a, a, you know, a little or a substantial amount of, of value to that and, and, and trade it or sell it. Um, and whether or not, you know, that should be something that's done with co-ops is kind of up for debate. All right. So can we, can I, uh, some, I'm, I am not as intimately knowledgeable with mm -hmm. this, uh, as probably I should be, uh, given how much of a fingerprint I have, uh, in terms of also issuing co-ops. But the question here is, this is just discussion, right? This yes. isn't a vote, yeah. this isn't no, any, like no. policy that's being implemented. Correct. This is purely just us to discuss. We, we want to, as a community come together, cause we're, we're not as like everybody on this stage. We are a community member. We use this protocol. We are not, you know, like under the payroll of POAP. Well, I, I do not have some official job title with POAP and neither does anyone here. And so this is our thoughts and opinions on stuff. Okay, yeah, sorry. I understood. I just meant like I didn't I wanted to make it clear again to maybe the small audience that is also new to this that yeah. this isn't like a snapshot vote or something that's being proposed. It's it's just open discussion on ops form. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. Well, that's funny you mentioned a snapshot vote because how interesting would it be to have uh, that that kind of poap governance? But right. it, the the problem with it is though um, the big picture here poap. Incorporated Poap Inc. is a it's a business like they they are not they're not the same cast as some other things like ENS. Um, they're both great products. I love both Poap and ENS, but they have kind of different goals in the ecosystem. Like ENS is simply a a public good with no uh, kind of like. Uh, well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. They're they're just simply a public good. Poap is a public good, but it's also a business. It's also like pushing the envelope of Web three into the whole world. Like they go out and do business deals and encourage people to use Poap. So um, it's not just simply something that the community can say we own this because Poap owns Poap. And that's that's okay. We have to kind of acknowledge and accept that. Yeah, I would have to ag agree on that. When it comes to like Poap Inc. as a company, you're exactly right. Like they are a company. They are trying to find ways to create an amazing product. And so that's what we're doing here today. We're trying to have healthy discussion on how Poap Inc. can help give us the best product possible. So that if there is anything that happens in the future, that there's already going to be things in place so that I guess what we're going to be talking about uh, today isn't going to be something that people are going to get so heated over. I guess going back to that question posed within the ethics thread, what would be a potential threat vector or negative consequence of allowing secondary market? co-ops like i'm just not seeing a downside like or why would so, even go ahead as a, as an issuer um who who does tight distributions or drops of co-ops you kind of understand who your community is and who your audience is so if you want to do stuff using that co-op with that community in the future if people trade and sell and buy and sell it kind of dilutes the community and then you don't know who is owning that co-op you know, so if you want to do something based off of that particular PO app, it kind of, uh, you know, makes it so that your audience isn't as known as when you initially distributed it. And here's my disconnect with that. And I've, I've heard that argument before. And I would say to some degree, you know, in, in an edge case scenario that that stands up. However, like we're dealing with blockchain, right? So in my mind, I go, if I still want to gate something based off of PO app for entry, I should be able to then, you know, the, the means by which it's done is trivial, but it still stands true. And that is, I'll see that on the blockchain. If I see a post-market purchase, 
a secondary market purchase, then I, in my mind, I go, well, you're disqualified. I want only Genesis POAPs allowed in here. So you can still, you know, manage and keep the integrity of those communities to some degree, but I, I just don't see that being a huge, a, a huge threat in my mind, I guess. I, I kind of have two takes on that. The first take being um, Genesis POAPs may not be in the same wallet forever. Um, so if I, if I feel the need to whatever shift my wallet to a different wallet and transfer those PO apps, it doesn't mean that I sold them. It means that I'm simply using a different wallet and I'm still the same person. Uh, I shouldn't be forced to use that wallet because that's where I received it. Um, and the second trans- to, to that point, isn't that transaction look different though than if it was on a marketplace and then purchased for some versus if you're transferring wallets? No, it's just a transfer. Hmm. Uh, the second thing being like it, I, and I kind of said this in the forum, um, when we're given technology tools, uh, we sort of receive them with the ability to do whatever they're enabled to do. And if PO apps are, they follow ERC 721, they're not soul bound, they can be transferred. Then it's, it's kind of wonky for a third party to say, we don't want you to use this protocol in this way. Um, and I would say, um, well, if you want or don't want something to happen, then you ought to enforce it at the protocol level, at the design level, rather than sort of telling people what you want them to do or not want them to do. Um, I just feel like that's poor product design to say, we don't want you to do something when users really ought to be free to do whatever they can do with the things that they feel like they own. Right. When you try to... I don't want to use the word, like, manipulate or anything, but when you try to, like, say, hey, sure, you may be able to do these things, but, oh, if you do that, then you're not going to be allowed to use this anymore. However, there's, like, nothing in place for a person to just do it at all. Uh, You know what I'm saying? Like, there could be somebody like, oh, hey, I got this NFT, I want to trade it or whatever. And, like, they're not going to particularly know that what they're doing is, like, against the POAP ethos or whatever, because they're not part of the community like that well (laughs) what's going to happen like are you supposed to shut down like marketplaces and stuff because they're trading po apps are you like um what are you supposed to do in that regard you know there's always going to be people wanting to trade memorabilia was a really good uh analogy that i saw in the discourse post people using the analogy of po apps are like memorabilia you go to an event you receive something and later on, perhaps you want to sell it. There needs to be something in place where if an event organizer, for example, they don't want that person to be able to sell their PO app because maybe they want to use it for something special and they only want the people who were actually there to even be able to use it or be able to use the utility from it, then perhaps there needs to be PO apps that are on a different type of token. So whenever soul boundness becomes more robust in the future, perhaps the event organizer needs to say, okay, this one is going to be under soul boundness. And then maybe for a different one, they could say this one is going to be a regular, you know, 721 or whatever. It's kind of interesting to note, like, um, I, (sighs) The first thing is that we're sort of discussing two different issues here. We're discussing transfers and we're also discussing like the fate of farmers, like people who are able to um, farm hundreds of one PO app in, you know, many different accounts. And so I guess maybe the assumption there is that they have some kind of financial value. That is something, you know, that needs to be dealt with at the protocol level. But then the other deal is selling po apps and if if me like superfiz i have a genesis depositor po app if i'm having a hard time and i'm like hey i need 10 eth right now and i'm willing to give up whatever rights and privileges might might at some point be associated with this po app um then as long as it's possible unless it's prevented by the protocol i think it should be fair for me to say i want to put this up for sale and whoever buys it can have the privileges that i would have had and it's not really an ethics thing it's just um 
allowing people to use the protocol as it exists. Sure. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that too. And you know, let's let's also remind everyone too that in in Anthony's post, or I should say, I decentralized post. I'm so, sorry about that. Um, he had put on there, you know, hey, like, what are our feelings about trading on the secondary market? Not necessarily should you be allowed to. I think people should be allowed to, and for a lot of reasons that you were saying, Fizz, you need to allow people the ability to at least like have like the the choice. Yet I can also see where in some circumstances an event organizer doesn't want people to be able to do that, but that needs to be like from the get go, like that's you consenting to get that PO app. You know, like per if it's not tradable, perhaps you don't even want it. And yeah. you need to be it, able to easily tell, hey, this is a soulbound I, token, and this one I can actually use wherever. I, I'd like how, to draw. How would you know? How would you know the rules around that if they're not enforced somehow in the in the in the protocol, right? Right. You couldn't. I I would like to draw a parallel here. Um, Anybody who knows me knows that I spend all of my days talking about decentralization, and it's so funny that when I talk about decentralization, I'm, I'm telling people it is possible to stake on the beacon chain in a hundred different ways, but I want you to choose a way that is um, most beneficial for the chain. And so, uh, yes, you can give your Ether to someone else and have them stake it. You can... Um, use centralized pools. You can give it to exchanges, and I'm sort of like asking people not to. Um, so there is a, f a function within the, the protocol that I'm saying you should make a better choice. And then when it comes to POAPs, I'm like, well, these features are here, and we want to use them all, um, even if other some people think it's a bad idea. I just I think that's an interesting kind of like comparison. I think. Um one of the things that we're having a disconnect with the community about is the purpose of a POA. A lot of people view them as um, an asset and a gateway into, uh, per, you know, potentially free things or discounts towards things. Um, and in that case, they should be traded or, or sold. And then the, the other half of the community is thinking about POAPs in the sense that it's like a thank you card from one person to another. Like when you graduate um, or go to a rehearsal or are given a gift, you write a thank you note. And um, those just don't seem right to trade or sell. And I think that discount or that, that disconnect between the two halves of POAP communities is what's causing the tension that we're experiencing. Yeah, I can see where you know, as a, as a fact where a POEP would have values, I've, you know, POEP has, POEP raffle is one of their, um, you know, utility or tools. And if you have a certain POEP, you can win things through the raffle that have monetary value. I've won a raffle from a community I participated in just because I had their POEP. So that gave it, you know, that, that POEP in particular could have additional value just because, uh, you know, potential for winning raffles with it. Isn't it fun to win a raffle with your POAPs? So much fun. Very exciting to like, hey, I participated in this community and I got a POAP for it. And then I entered into their raffle and I ended up getting something. That's how I got my, uh, my Git POAP hoodie. And uh, man, is that thing comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's... It is very interesting that, uh, Jen, you, you bring up like the disconnect because POAPs can be used for so many things. It's, uh, I, I sort of think of it as like a Swiss army knife, where on that Swiss army knife, there are a bunch of different mini tools that you can use it for. And when the time arises, you can use it for that. It's going to be up to the person who creates the event on like what kind of many tools that they want on that Swiss Army knife. And, you know, perhaps being able to, wow. like, transfer or, like, sell. Maybe they don't want that for their POAP, but there's also going to be other POAPs where a person, you know, like, hey, I want this to be out in the 
in the market and everything. Like, as you said, Jen, there's Poaps that are used for people getting discounts. Perhaps a person gets that Poap and they say, you know what? I'm not really part of this anymore, but like I could sell this and get a few bucks out of it because it has some utility. Maybe that's going to be great for someone. Or maybe even a person who missed out on that Poap Mint, they would get the opportunity to actually enter in that community because it's available on a secondary market. Yeah, I'd say that really is a level or a value proposition of a POAP. It is the the future implied value of some kind of return. Um, so, like, the E-Staker Challenge coin, like, that's that's a really big deal to me. If someone gets the E-Staker Challenge coin, it means that they are a top tier in our community. So if we ever, like, give something away, it will go to those people first. Um, and, I, you know, I struggle with... Would we want to give that to a third party? But if a th if whoever earned it felt compelled enough to sell it or share it, um, then maybe that's okay. Maybe that's just the lay of the land. Maybe that's how. Maybe maybe whoever took it gets that future implied value when they accept it or when they buy it or whatever. Maybe that's why they're buying it. Yeah, that's what even gives it value in the first place. Because when you think about a POAP market, how many POAPs do you realistically believe get traded? Even with NFTs, like the broader scale of NFTs, a vast majority of them are illiquid. So do we really need to worry too much about like, oh no, they're selling my POAP for one die on this thing? Um, you know... <laughs> like we, we need to keep our expectations of what these markets really look like nfts are illiquid in the chat i'm not saying that they're illiquid i'm saying that there are some nfts that are illiquid like for example would ra random poap one two three that you know you get it may not have as much of a market as random poap one two four or whatever so that, that's what I'm saying. There are going to be some that have that market. Some are not. I think it's sad that we have to define that um, if you're showing up just to grab as many as you can with the intent to sell to the people that really wanted them is, um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of sad because I grew up, um, you know, where when you'd go to baseball games, there'd be ticket scalpers and ticket scalpers were people who would buy up as many tickets as they could to the baseball games and then resell them to the people that actually want to go at double the cost because they're sold out. And that to me makes it um, seriously. I don't know. It just makes me angry with those kind of people, which is a heated emotion. And I think that's why people do get so emotional over it. Yeah. Would you think that if there is some sort of safeguard in place, I, I, I know that we talk about uh, like one person, one POAP when it comes to the, the event drops. What if there was uh, some sort of system that said, hey, you could only own one of this token? So say, uh, I, I don't know exactly how they're identified within uh, like the, the contract itself, but is there some sort of safeguard or perhaps maybe there could be some sort of safeguard that says you already own this PO app, you're not allowed to own another one? Th that could be on the minting side, but it couldn't be on the, on the like, let's say I owned one, I could buy another one because they're essentially individual NFTs and outside of POAP issuance, there's nothing in like open C to say you can't have two of these NFTs um, that they would essentially have to follow a different standard than ERC 721. Uh, like a standard that says only one of these can exist in a wallet at the same time. And I think a, the a common attack vector is less as like one or two wallets porting multiples of the same and it's more of thousands of individual wallets with one or two co-ops yeah that's the way you make it look legit right <laughs> yeah. 
But all right, so this has been pretty cool talking about pubs in the secondary market. I do want to move on a little bit further into this post here. So there was another question that was asked, and that is, how should we think about those who intentionally try and manipulate the protocol? So from my understanding, there were a few what I'm going to call rule breakers who were not using POAPs appropriately and POAP took action on them after long investigations into them. They had determined that they were not appropriate for this community and they took action. The action that they took, many people did not like it. But they are coming out here and saying, okay, how should we think about those who intentionally try and manipulate the protocol? And the two examples that are given are, what should be done with people caught sharing secret words? And what should be done with people caught collecting posts from events they did not attend? So I'm going to go ahead and open that to whoever wants to begin answering it. I mean, as a general rule of thumb, like I'm going to always love and welcome farmers with open arms. Uh, and that's for any protocol, because I feel like on some level, like you need that because it's it's hardening the protocol and it's making the next iteration better and better. Like if if not for those things, like you wouldn't I feel like you wouldn't see the progress uh, that POAP is seeing right now. Um, but in terms of the specifics to these questions, that's a little difficult, right? Because uh, now we're we're dealing with. It's easy in POAP's case because they're incorporated, so it's you know it's a bit of a walled garden. So um, I don't know. I feel I, like there's I, not a, a right or wrong answer there. I love what you said. You kind of I don't know if you said it out right, but you implied that many of the farmers are POAP's biggest fans, and there's value in that. So it 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 kind of disheartens me a little bit that. Um, you know, we've we've taken people who really are obsessed with POAP, um, maybe even too obsessed to the point that they're willing to do things that are unethical to get POAPs. Um, but that's a user base; like those are valuable contributors. And so, I really feel like rather than punishing them, we need to use the the protocol. The protocol needs to be shaped. Uh, to structure their behavior. Now, if it's outright stealing, if it you know if it's like brute forcing um, POAP mint codes, then that's you know that's an absolute like obvious. But if it's uh, people acting within the protocol to to get codes, um, then I really feel like that's an opportunity for POAP to tighten up um, to find like you know I, I've been talking about civil resistance measures like Bright ID for a long time. Um, Bright ID may be farmable, but it is another hurdle that slows people down if they're trying to use POAP in in an undesirable way. And it, it's one of those the for every every time you face an issue, you kind of stack interventions until the issue is resolved. Um, and instead of just being upset that it's happening, you stack interventions until it's not a problem anymore. Well, is there anything you would like to say? Jen, anything you would like to say? Well, if you're trying to talk, uh, we, I'm not able to hear you, brother. I've been um, chit-chatting down in the comments section. Sorry. All right, well, I was going to reconnect. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of give my piece on this. Um, so... Really, when we think about people who intentionally try and manipulate the protocol, you have to consider, like, okay, how are they trying to manipulate it? So, in the, the two points given out, what should be done with people sharing secret words? Honestly, we need to move away from secret word. I don't like it. I would not want to use secret word as my distribution method at all, because I understand that there's huge risk that somebody who I potentially would not want to acquire my PO app could. And so whenever I make an event, I try to steer clear of that and use different distribution methods. However, I understand that there may be somebody out there who would want to use secret word, but you know, I, I, I think we've seen through multiple examples in the past that 
it leads to activity that as a whole we don't necessarily want. And so perhaps PROAP needs to find a new way to have some sort of large distribution method that can be easily used that isn't a secret word. And then people who get caught collecting pilots from events that they didn't attend, it really depends on how they acquired it. You know, if they ended up purchasing it from some marketplace, well, then, of course, they're still within the rules. If they transferred it from one wallet to another, then, of course, like, they're within the rules. Um, but, hey, if you're out here, if you're trying to exploit bugs in the contract and everything, I don't think you should be allowed to interact. Like, um, like perhaps there could be a blacklist that says, hey, like, you are bad for this community in terms of you don't use our our product the right way we're going to blacklist you from being able to mint perhaps to this address and sure they could just make a new wallet but they're going to have to rebuild their identity on that wallet if they haven't already and then what were they going to do attempt to to steal more well they're just going to get blacklisted again <laughs> you know it's basically one of these things that you're going to be fighting it for for a long time until you can really have the strong barriers in place to fight it. We we know from like years and years of this kind of stuff that blacklists um well, we we should really call them disallow lists. Disallow lists do not work long term. Um they uh they fall out of maintenance. They get uh too big they get the wrong people on them occasionally um there really have to be better measures they have to be like code based algorithmic measures rather than like a brute forced disallow list those really just don't seem to work in the world all right well now that you're up here are you able to give what you want to say yeah can you hear me sure can so yeah, I mean, I agree with with you. I, I think um, you know if if there's accounts that are uh, abusing the system by getting uh, you know secret words that they're not supposed to or sharing codes for events that they're not a part of, you know there, those accounts, you know if there is a hub has maybe a, a a rules of of how the protocol is supposed to be managed and used then then those accounts you know can be blacklisted or locked out i know that might be a difficult technical hurdle you, like you were saying your super fizz over time but you know one of the things that you know we see as issuers is if you are giving out a, a pub for an event and the code gets leaked you know there's the potential that all your 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 pull-ups actually get claimed by farmers instead of the actual people participating in your event. And that kind of leaves a bad taste in the participants. It leaves a, a bad reputation for PoApp. So it, it is a difficult problem that you know we're 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 looking for solutions for. Yeah, when I think about people taking advantage of the system, what comes to mind is like a concert or maybe a play that is full of um, like fake build cardboard people um, or people that are all like, you know, their headphones are in, they're looking at their phones, but they're not actually there for the event. And I think those are the type of people that are taking advantage of this protocol. Um, and I, I actually saw a photo and this was for co coordinate farming. Um, but, where they had someone in a call center um, with like eight computers in front of them and each of the different computers was connected to a different Discord server call. Um, and the attendance there is, you know, again, it's specifically for coordinate, but um, it's the same issue we're dealing with here is that we're fighting against um, banks of fake or uninvolved community members that are just there to um, glean whatever value they can for themselves, but not give anything back to the community. And when you think about that, it, I understand why they took the actions they did. Hey, can, can I ask how many people up on stage have ever used uh, a MakerDAO CDP? 
Michael, have you done it? You, I know we talked about it before. No, I never actually pulled the trigger. Yeah, same here. I understand okay. how it works, but I just never pulled well, the trigger. Okay, so let's ask the question, how many, maker sa how many MakerDAO CDPs are abused? How often do we hear about um, you know, people stealing billions of dollars from MakerDAO CDPs? Do you know how often that happens? Not too often. Yeah, it, it doesn't happen. Because the rules are codified in the protocol. And so if they don't want something to happen, rather than making it a moral debate, they codify the rules in the protocol. And that's what, that is the thing that defines how people must act. Um, and so that, I, I, I sincerely believe like in Web3, um, we shouldn't rely on uh, asking people to be one thing or another we should codify the rules and expect people to um, do what's within those rules and i think that applies for poap it, it applies for beacon chain staking the same as it applies for MakerDAO. Um, we we should allow and expect really people to do everything that's possible without coming back at them and saying you're doing it wrong you're doing our protocol wrong um I just I don't know that that's really a way to uh, invite people in and make them feel welcome if if we're telling them what they can't and shouldn't do. Right, and Poap is one of the biggest introducers of Web three to a lot of people. I know that even for me, Poap was the thing that really started getting me to actually interact within this ecosystem. And so, as an onboarding tool, you don't want to have all these uh, like red tape blocking everything out um, at when it's just on the layer zero. You need to have it within the actual protocol itself, and that is how people are going to have to use it. It's I don't, I don't want to say it's like forced use, but it, it really kind of is. It, if you don't want people trading them, you got to make it so that they can't be tradable. If you don't... Uh, want people being able to come in and mint as many as they want in the same event, then you make it so they can't do that. And Poep did that, right? There used to be a bug where you could mint to the same address, the same, uh, like, mint over and over and over. Well, Poep fixed that, right? Because, hey, we don't want people being able to have more than one of the same Poep from the same mint, you know? <laughs> Like, you have to put it in, and it's up to ProApp in order to do it. I, I understand that they do have a, a product team that is up and running and trying to make sure that things are moving forward, and I hope that they're in here listening because it, it really is going to be on them to, hey, like you, you got you, you to gotta get it in the protocol, man. It is what it is. But all right, everyone, I'm going to say we get some final thoughts on this, and then we move on to the community spotlight, where Anvedika is going to talk about his project. Any last words, anyone? Yes. Wow, that's a so, very uh, grim way to put that. <laughs> so my final thought is, you know, I'm optimistic. I think I think this is something that the, the POAP team will be able to develop and, and, you know, take the criticism and feedback from it and, and you know, push it to the next level. All right, everybody. So, Super Fizz, I'm going to go ahead and hand the microphone to you. I'm excited to see what you hey! have to talk about with Amvetica. <laughs> Michael, what are we talking about? Oh, hey, is this about the 29th thing? This is. This is, in fact, about the 29th oh, thing. Oh, heck yeah. I didn't know. I mean, of course, I've been reviewing the agenda carefully. Um, so, yeah. So, Michael, what do you got going on on the 29th? Yes. Uh, so, uh, as Mojo introduced uh, me at the start of the call, I am part of the East Staker community. And as part of the East Staker community, uh, it is really important that we advocate for and support solo stakers on the Ethereum network. And as part of that, um, we are hosting a validator prep workshop, meaning that uh, it's free and uh, available to anyone to attend. There will be more than one of these. Um, so as I discuss the details of this one, 
um, the 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 scope will be the same, but there will be multiples uh, leading up to the merge. Um, so there'll be multiple opportunities for you to attend one if you are a solo staker looking for help. Likewise, these uh, sessions will also be recorded uh, so you can watch them on your own time. But basically, it's a workshop where we go step by step and we go through specifically some Mayor ESETS guides, uh, which are uh, a very, uh, I don't know if you call this standard, but it's, it's, it's one set of guides that has been used and advocated for use uh, for solo stakers. Um, we'll be going through CoinCash use guides, and then we'll also be going through the ETH Docker setup. And what we mean by that is uh, we'll go through step by step. If you've used those guides to do the initial setup of your Ethereum validator, we'll then uh, go through the steps you need to take specifically to update it in preparation for the merge for mainnet. Okay, so you're blowing my mind here. I have a couple questions. Um, what what is this organization that that's that's doing this? Is this the who is it? Right. Good question. Uh, so uh, as I sort of briefly mentioned before, the community is called the ETH Staker community. Uh, we are a welcoming first, knowledgeable second community. And what that means is uh, it does not matter your background. It does not matter your knowledge base, uh, how familiar or not familiar you are with these things, uh, whether you know what Ethereum is or isn't. You're welcome to join, and we can help guide you along the way in terms of what your interests are uh, within the Web3 community. But we are uh, just a, a Discord group. Uh, we're just a group of, of people with like interests. You can find us on Discord. You can find us on YouTube, Reddit, Twitter. Uh, insert social media platform. We are definitely on there. Um, and, that, and what we do is we just help um, specifically, though, uh, we are a group of solo stakers, um, validators, home stakers, and we talk shop, technicals, uh, help each other out in terms of uh, any issues, questions. Uh, we just generally are there for to support each other and, and um, make sure that everyone is comfortable and confident in staking on the Ethereum network. Okay, so let's say that I'm obsessed with Ethereum and I want to stake, but I don't have 32 Ether. Um, like, is there another community that I would fit into? Like, um, like I want to be an ETH staker, but I don't have 32 Ether. Yep, and it, that's such a great question. Uh, and it's one of the things that ETH staker is really good at. And that is, in addition to supporting uh, solo stakers, we sort of try to give you the knowledge and expertise for the full breadth of staking on the Ethereum network. So solo staking is obviously going to be the platinum, the gold standard, the thing that we advocate for. But like you said, if you don't have that 32 uh, you know, war chest of Ether on hand, you've only got a couple uh, uh, on hand, you can still participate and stake within the network. And we help you uh, by going through and educating you on pooled staking services. Uh, we are definitely um, one of the services we advocate for uh, because it, it is the closest aligned in ethos to Ethereum. You're going to uh, say it, aren't you? You're going to say it. You're going to say it. I know what you're going to say. Rock I'm not going to let you say it. You're going to say it. Rock 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, so there are definitely, there are services out there that you can solicit if you are not a 32 ETH holder. Uh, and there are varying degrees of pools that you can solicit. All um, they have different ways in which they service. Um, so we can definitely help you out in understanding the differences between those services, uh, what that means for you as the end user. Um, and that way, you know, as you learn sort of the spectrum, you can gauge your your tolerance uh, for what your you know, the types of freedoms that you're willing to give up or not give up and then choose the service based on that information. Okay, so, okay, so I have one last question. Let's say um, like... Let's say I stake with Coinbase or with Lido or like one of the things that I hear people kind of like saying, ah, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, it, it, can I, is it okay for me to still come to East Staker or should I again, like find somewhere else? No, you, you, you are always welcome at East Staker. And, and in fact, that's, those are the types of discussion and the, and the conversation that we like to have because it, uh, you know, those are the types of questions uh, that we're asking ourselves as East Staker too. You know, is is this something that I should be doing? Is this something I shouldn't be doing? I think the 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 very short and sweet and nice and pretty answer is, if it it 
there's no wrong way to stake on Ethereum in the sense that if you're staking on Ethereum, you are, um, in short, you're participating within the network, right? You're helping things uh, move forward. There are varying degrees uh, that are better than others, um, but it, we want you to participate. We want you to, to uh, in whatever form that may be, whether it's staking, or uh, or otherwise. So, um, so we can we I ask you? With, can I ask? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what What's the minimum needed to to stake on Ethereum? Do you have to be rich, or you know? Uh, I believe if memory serves correctly, it's point one is the minimum. Is that right, Fizz? Point well, beneath? so. Technically, you can go to Uniswap, and uh, again, I promote staking with Rocket Pool. Uh, and for people who don't know, I'm actually on ETH Staker. I'm sort of just feeding Michael questions or feeding Vedeka questions. Um, but you can go to Uniswap, and you can buy uh, essentially dust of of our ETH if that's what you have to stake. Now, it may not be worth your transaction cost, but you can go to Uniswap and buy 0. .0001 of our ETH and technically you would be staking that even though in reality it, it probably wouldn't be worth that transaction cost i would say if you're able to swap maybe 0 0.01 um and hold that for a year or two you would actually begin to see some valuable gains um but it, it really does um you you know michael suggested 0.1 um but i would say anything above 0 0.01 if you have if if the gas fees are low, it, it's worth considering, uh, but you would kind of want to model that out. You're getting about six per six percent a year on it, uh, so uh, that's that's not mega gains, uh, but it is a a good way to store ether and get some rewards from it. So I have so, a question for you, Unvetica. Actually, so if I were to come to this workshop on the 29th of July. What exactly am I going to be learning again? Uh, yeah, so specifically, we'll go through Sumer ESET's guides, CoinCash Use, and the ETH Docker guides. Uh, but we'll also just open it up to community questions um, about the merge in general. So if you're curious about if you have a technical question, whether it's specific to your validator or not uh, we'll go ahead and field that to the best of our ability um, but it's basically a step-by-step -step how to guide on preparing your ethereum validator for the upcoming merge and if you have uh, any questions if there was a detail that wasn't shared uh, or if you do want to attend uh, you want to bookmark the information head on over to our website eststaker.cc and you'll uh, hit the events section. You'll see it right there, the Merge Validator Prep Workshop. You can, uh, all the links to add it to your calendar, uh, the direct link to the live stream uh, are all there. And uh, to sort of uh, just put a little cherry on top real quick, if history serves or is any indication uh, of this, uh, they're more <laughs> likely than not, there will be a co-op distribution uh, for, for that, for those who attend the live stream. Uh, and yes. so I, I want to say uh, Anvetica is one of the best educators I know. He he doesn't uh, he doesn't ever allow his ego to get in the way of teaching people things. So he's so patient um, and he's he's really just an awesome representative of ETH Staker um, when he does these trainings. And I assume you'll be with Remy Roy and and probably uh, Thorsten. Is that Yep, that was that was great. I'm glad you shouted them out as well. Um, so yes, I will be there, um, but I will not be the only uh, person there. The two Giga Brains, uh, both Remy Ra and uh, York, will both be there. Uh, everyone will be in very safe hands between the two of them. They are incredibly uh, knowledgeable and very um, close to the protocol. I'm comfortable with it. So. Yeah, and um, that's I, I've been involved with staking since – well, I've been staking before Ethereum, uh, but I've been involved with Ethereum staking since 2018, uh, even though it didn't go live until 2020. Uh, and I can still say beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, uh, Thorsten or York Down and uh, Remy Roy are two of the most knowledgeable people. When I have questions, I go to them. So um, – I, I, I can't wait to see this. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it on the 29th, but I hope I can come and bug you guys for a little bit. 
Please do. Please do. Yeah, I will have to say when it does come to Remy and Thorsten, definitely some of the smartest, genuine people I've met. I know that Remy, for me, uh, whenever I was spending a lot of time in the East Sacred community, he helped me contribute to staking tools and things like that. Like, he's very passionate. He knows what he's talking about. Same with Thorsten. I mean, when it comes to Thorsten, he's literally like hands in everything. Like it, his contributions are plentiful throughout that ecosystem. So you really are in excellent hands when it comes to getting education about the merge and prepping your validator. I'd also like to add that Embedica is an amazing pop artist. So uh, I'll be there just for that. <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, see, this is another thing that I like about POAPs too. So you may end up going for the POAP, but if you actually participate, you're going to become a better person in the end because you're going to be able to, in this instance, gain some education on something that is genuinely important in the Web3 ecosystem. Hey, do you know what you're doing? I, I, don't, I don't know, Mr. Mojo, if I've said this around you, but it's one of my favorite sayings. POAPs make you more of who you are. That's right. So like... You might have been interested in staking a little bit, but you might not have gone. But you're like, oh, there's going to be a POAP, and I care a little bit about staking. And you go, and then you become more of who you are because of POAP, which I think is a really cool side benefit. Yes, and that's definitely the vibe I was trying to give off. I'm glad that you were able to bring out the sentence that really, really encapsulates it. But all right, Anvitika, is there anything else that you would like to tell us about the validator workshop and the merge prep that you're going to be having before we move on to your three favorite po apps for this show anyway um yeah just just to kind of uh, hit home again uh that this is one in a series of events that we'll be doing uh so don't get upset if, if you're unable to make this specific one and all of those record or all of those um series will be recorded and uploaded to our youtube channel uh, so you'll have access to plenty of information uh, pre and post merge, and just a uh, just a real quick and dirty like, don't get scared of this stuff. Like if even if you're not staking, if you just have a question about the merge and you just if you you're not sure and you've been itching, like just head on over to our Discord and and ask the question. Like no one's gonna bite. You're gonna get you know welcomed with open arms. Um, and and given as much information as you can handle. Um, so don't be afraid to ask, don't be a stranger, and uh, get involved in, in any way you can. All right, Anvetica, thank you so much. So as I have alluded to, the first time that you came up here, I asked you for your three favorite PO apps, and this time around I asked you to give me three more, three more PO apps that you wanted to show off. If you give me one second here, I'm going to get this set up so that we can go through them. Absolutely. All right. You have access to our agenda document, correct, sir? Uh, yes. All right. I'm, I'm going to go in this exact order. I'm going to post the link in the chat, and you're going to talk about why you chose it. So starting All off right, with cool. the first one. Yep. Uh, so the first one, this is an active uh, PO-OP distribution. Uh, it's a series, uh, but this was the Spolia testnet merge um, co-op that we distributed for the call series that we've been doing as a community, as an Ethereum community. This last one, we had uh, Anthony Sassel from uh, Daily Gway um, host on the East Acre website, or excuse me, on the East Acre uh, YouTube. Uh, so that was incredible. It's always awesome to have uh, him on there. He's incredibly knowledgeable and, um, you know, He's got such a finger on the pulse of the ecosystem. It's always great to get his two cents on things. You know, has he done a Poap song yet? I don't know if he has. I oh, think, my. I think, he, I think he needs to do a Poap song. I I think I'm going to give him a holler right after this because that's <laughs> – what? Yes. Yeah. I'm on it. Okay. Hey, so hey bef was... before you move oh, on from Sepolia, uh, do you want to talk about what's going to happen uh, – in a few weeks re re related to that? Yep, that's exactly where I was leading into. Oh, okay, so okay. this worked for a, a, the previous event. However, like I alluded to, this is for a series. So what we're looking at is pull up two of four, meaning that we have two more on the way. Um, the next one is gonna be the Gorley testnet merge call. Um, and I don't wanna botch this. So Fizz, do we have a date on that? Has that been released yet? 
Uh, am I live? Sorry, I've been clicking around. Yeah, you're live. Yep. Nope. Oh, okay, great. Sorry. Um, yes, there is a date. It is not on the top of my head. I want to say it is uh, September 19th. It, well, okay. the week of September 19th, which likely means it'll be September 21st. The Tuesday of that week is the most right. likely right now. So what that means is, um, it, it, so this is actually a, a perfect full circle. I didn't even mean to do this. So the um, the live stream event that we were uh, that we're hosting on the 29th, the validator merge call, that's um, in preparation for the merge uh, for, and we'll be doing that on the Corley test net. Um, and the, um, that's what this other call is. So when the Gourley testing actually happens with the, the merge release version will be deployed on the Gourley network. Um, that live stream will also be hosting on the eStaker YouTube page. All of those details, when we have those solidified and, and everything is uh, finalized for any event ever in the future, head on over to eStaker.cc. We always put it on there and we always have it up uh, a few days beforehand on the YouTube channel as well. So if you stake out on those two channels, uh, you, you won't miss anything. Uh, but yeah, so the, the Gourley one will be the upcoming live stream where we'll dis, uh, distribute the three, uh, version three of four, and then we'll have a fourth one for the live mainnet merge live stream call. And that will be the entire seemingly Ethereum ecosystem from the EF to all the other communities we've been working with. Um, it should be a really good time. I'm very excited for that. But all right, Unvedica, let's move on to the next one. One that I was able to mint today. I was like, oh man, this is super beautiful. Yeah, this one's fun. Uh, so uh, Superfizz uh, mentioned this earlier in the call today. Uh, that is the eStaker challenge coin. Uh, and I wanted to highlight this one again for two reasons. One, uh, because this is the 2022 version. I believe I highlighted last year's version uh, last time I was a guest. Uh, so we've we've got the updated version for this year. And I, I hesitated bringing this one up. And the caveat for this one is, this isn't one like you can just get. Uh, there's no community call to attend. There isn't something you can do to buy it. This is a, a, a very sought after and exclusive pull-up because the way in which you get it um, isn't, uh, there's no set of rules. It, it is a significant contribution to the eStaker community where it usually means that one of our core eStaker members brings it up to one of the, the group and says, wow, look look what this person did. It, I, I can't believe uh, the effort or the work or this is how cool is this or how valuable is this? And when we all go, wow, that's really cool, we all kind of come together and go, challenge coin? Yep, that's that's what we're going to do. And it, it's a way to, to acknowledge and commemorate a volunteer work of someone that, a, a body of work that came strictly out of passion and not out of um, monetary gain or we're trying to chase some sort of clout. Um, so it, 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 one of the cool uh, pull-ups I, I like highlighting for that very reason. Excellent. And then we have one more as well, one that I've been seeing around and one that, uh, if possible, can I please get the main link to this one, everyone? Like, because uh, <laughs> I know who she is. Yeah, this is fun. Um, I'm actually, it was, this is going to sound so sad, uh, but I was actually excited to be a guest today, specifically to share this poem because I'm so excited about it. Um, and, and the reason for that is because uh, at least within the group of people that I hang around with, we've sort of made it a thing to really celebrate when someone that we know goes from, quote unquote, the corporate world and is able to leave their standard nine to five job and come into Web3 full time. And that's exactly what this POAP is. So uh, a, a close friend of ours um, was able to leave their uh, longtime job uh, their nine to five and come over to the web of world three. Uh, and she made herself uh, Kayla's first day in web three. Uh, so and, I just, and so I, now she can work 24 seven. Exactly. That's how it works. <laughs> yes. That's how it works. <laughs> 40 hour job a week job for the 24 seven. Exactly. Yep. Once that's you get fun. in web three, you never are never off the clock. That's how it feels. Exactly. You know, the, the three in web three stands for three full-time jobs. <laughs> right. You know, I haven't heard that one, but I definitely understand what you're saying there. 
But all right, Unvedica, I really appreciate you sharing three more poaps that you have enjoyed since the last time that you were on here. But okay, everyone, we are at the end of this week's call. I greatly, uh, I greatly appreciate, rather, everybody coming on today. We had such a great discussion about some of the discourse going on and, of course, what is happening over in the Eastaker community. But all right, everyone, the DGM bot is no longer running, and it is possible to claim your POAP. So if you go over to the POAP claim channel, or I believe it's actually called, uh, yes, it is POAP claim. Awesome, I had a great memory on that. You go over to the POAP claim channel, you're going to type in forward slash claim, and DGM bot should give you your POAP mint link if you qualify. And again, the qualifications are you were in here for about 10 minutes, you did not mute uh, us, uh, I should say you, you did not deafen us, uh, hit the headphones icon, and you were not going around to different communities while you were listening to us. But okay, everyone, thank you so much for coming on, thank you for coming out. Very, very uh, good show, everyone. I will see Thanks you all next week. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank bye you bye. so much. Thanks, bye. Bye-bye.